All right, so today, three surprising things about kids and sleep. All right, so every single human needs eight hours of sleep. Kids typically don't get eight hours of sleep, right? Well, kids need more, don't they? I think they need a little more. Yeah. Well, we certainly notice that they need a little more, but as a basic fa fact, every human goes through an eight hour long process right. as they sleep. Uh, a uh, an REM stage is very valuable, non-REM stages. Those stages that take place are all very valuable and it ends up taking about eight hours, right? So the three things, first one, right? There are more automobile accidents when kids don't get enough sleep yes. because there's been many studies that show that reduce or moving the start time of school ahead actually shows a significant reduction in automobile accidents. Yeah. Now, when you were a teacher, well, you taught elementary school, right? So you didn't really notice it. What do you notice in your um, college students and stuff like that in terms of their sleep habits and stuff? Um, well, my class is in the morning. Yeah. So I've got a 9.15 and a 11 or something. Mm -hmm. The 9.15 is really hard. For them? Even at 9.15, they are dragging. Yeah. Um, because, you know, as we all experience at some point in our lives where they're staying up late and yeah they're not caring as much about sleep right and you well, notice a huge huge shift in them oh absolutely yeah the difference between my 9 15 and my 11 a.m class is the same course mm -hmm. but my 11 a.m course is much more interactive much more talkative mm -hmm. um you know and then that goes into number two the ability to learn and retain information Right. Mm -hmm. So do you notice that these kids actually do better in class? Um, at the college level, no. No. It kind of... Doesn't really matter because they do studying on their own and stuff like that. Yeah. They're not... <laughs> they're all sleep deprived to a degree, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, class is just something they have to go to. They're not yeah. really... But in younger kids, you notice it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You could tell when you taught elementary, the kids that weren't able to get adequate sleep yeah and that's why as schools we tried to do as much as we could in the morning to help the kids um, you know kind of be ready to learn I gotcha okay and what were some of those things so we would offer breakfast um, we at one point were doing um, almost like a morning recess like before school mm -hmm. kind of like to get your to body get moving yep. um, and in the winter they would go into the gym and they could do things like that you're able to notice a big difference in terms of the kids that were able to sleep and not sleep and you at school would the school would put together a lot of stuff to try to get the kids up and going because yeah. they knew how valuable that was and how much it impacted them absolutely and we see it in our own kids yeah um, do teachers ever go over that with teach uh, with parents if they the parent the kids are struggling? Do you guys ever go over that with parents? In like, can you notice sleep? a difference? Yeah, is that something that's ever brought up? Not really. The only time that we would kind of initiate that conversation if was if we felt um, maybe there was a reason because the student had just started a new medication and that I was impacting sure. their sleep. So okay. they were very um, there needed to be a very tangible reason. Mm -hmm. Or observable reason to yeah. talk about a lack of sleep home health habits you yeah. don't want to get into that exactly okay. yeah gotcha all right number three without sleep anxiety depression mental health stuff yeah. huge right yeah you see that in college and adolescent even ad adults right everyone without lack with lack of sleep ends up having mood issues yeah right so what do you see the most in, in kids? Can you tell? Because we know that lack of sleep in kids with ADHD, I mean, there's a huge correlation with that, right? Yeah. So do you guys notice anything or do our parents even aware of that in school? I think so. And I think it's becoming much more of um, a topic of conversation yeah. um, because of the pandemic and, you know, everything that students have gone through since last mm -hmm. March, there's a real push for true social emotional yep. skills and um, sleep's a huge component of that. Sleep is a huge component of it and to really do it well and to really have or, or teach kind of self care, you've yep. got to look at all of that. Yep. Um, and before it was just kind of a nice to have and you'd talk about self regulation, mm -hmm. you know, self awareness, but 
um, I think everybody's kind of looking at the whole picture right now. Yeah, big time. All right, so the things that we wanna make sure we end with is some helpful hints on sleep. One of the big things is make sure you realize that sleep meds, right? Sleep medications are actually sedatives. They don't allow you to hit those stages of true sleep, mm -hmm. such as the non-REM, REM, sedatives, especially the REM sleep, you, you need that for a proper brain function. And sleep medications um, don't allow you to get that. Obviously, if you're taking it, take that up with your primary care physician because you don't want to stop taking uh, sleep meds. We're not saying to stop taking any medication, but that's definitely something to be aware of. The other things to keep in mind is reducing uh, white light, bright light exposure right before bed. I mean, we are really the first generation of uh, the light bulb, right? That has always had the light bulb around. Yeah. Or the first era, right? The last hundred years or so. And then keeping it consistent and cool. All right. All right. Take care.